ray diagrams, the plane mirror. I love mirrors. This is neat. These little toys, you get them in gift shops and stuff. It's a little airplane. Airplane in a box. Airplane floating in a box. Airplane in a box where you can put money in top. Where does the money go? It's done with mirrors. It's a trick. It's awesome. They got lots of these different things. It's a little cube. They're just so well done. There's some very poorly done ones, but these are great. It looks like there's a cube there. This is my favorite. A little space station. A little floating space station. Put in a coin and, and look at this. It spins. It's moving. It's floating in space and flying at the same time. This is the best thing. If you change the angle, you can see a little bit of the trick right about here. There it is. We'll stop it. It's half of a space station and it's stuck to a mirror. And the ring is there. And the part in this one, the mirror and the, the half that's stuck to it move. You're seeing the reflection. Reflections are based on two principles. One, light bounces. It bounces off of things. Bounces off a mirror in this case. But the human eye perceives light as though it travels in a straight line. So when you look in the mirror, you think there's something there. There's something in the mirror. It's not. Look at there. It's right there in front of the mirror. So what we want to do in this activity is to plot that ray of light. But with the laser, it's easy. You just put a couple of dots where the laser is. And then you can mark the path. First thing you need to do when you're going to do these is you've got to draw the mirror. Don't forget to draw the mirror. It really messes things up. Then you can take it out of the way. And using a ruler, you line up the dots, and you show the ray of light that hits the mirror. And then you show the ray of light that bounces off of the mirror. And this is what the ray of light is actually doing, hitting the mirror and bouncing off. But when we look in the mirror, we see something over there. We see the line we drew, but now it's in the mirror. There it is. It looks like the object is inside the mirror. Now, it isn't really in the mirror, so what we want to do is plot the ray of light that we perceive. The ray of light coming from the image. And in these diagrams, because it isn't really coming from over there, we use a dashed line. And it's a straight line from the ray that we're perceiving. It hits the mirror, bounces towards us, and we think it's coming from over there. So that's what we're trying to plot. We put the mirror back, and everything lines up. There's a ray of light, there's a line we've drawn heading straight towards the laser. If we look at it from above, you can see the beginning of a ray diagram. That's the ray that we perceive. That's the image ray. Somewhere over there, there's a laser. Well, if we want to pinpoint it, we've got to, we've got to pinpoint it from a second angle. So we pick some random angle, any angle we want, and we do the same thing. We plot another ray of light. So we marked a point on the left side, on the real object, and then we're going to plot the ray of light that would pass through that point, hit the mirror, bounce off, and head back towards it. So that's what's happening to the ray of light. It's hitting the mirror and bouncing off. Using your straight edge, you go ahead and plot it. The actual ray of light hitting, and the ray of light as it bounces off the mirror. And a lot of times these diagrams start to get a little confusing, so putting a little arrow on the end of it kind of makes you uh, remember which one is what. That's the actual ray of light. But once again, we perceive that there's an image on the other side of the mirror. So we plot the ray of light that bounced off the mirror, but our eye perceives as though it traveled in a straight line. It didn't, but we perceive that. And so we draw a dash line to represent the ray coming from the image. So we've got an object on one side of the mirror, and on the other side of the mirror we have an image. Now the truth is there's millions of rays of light coming from an object, going in all different directions. We can pick any one we want. We'll pick, pick some random third angle. We can do anything we want. We've got rays of light that are hitting and traveling in all different directions. They hit the mirror, they come to us, and they produce this image. So let's pick a third one, just some random ray of light. It hits the mirror, and sure enough, if you look in the mirror, there's the image. And so we plot this third ray. Third ray isn't really necessary. All you really need is two. 
but for plane mirrors this is really kind of neat it shows you exactly what's happening we draw the actual ray of light the beam as it strikes the mirror and the beam as it reflects off of the mirror this is actually happening so we use a solid line but we perceive that ray as though it's coming from inside the mirror and so that's the image ray it's a straight line except we're going to use a dashed line that dashed line will in fact hit our image they intersect at the point of the image so now we've pinpointed an object and an image and this is what's happened to actual rays of light now that's just for a dot a single point on the object a single point of the image if we were to take a, a real object and put it in front of a mirror, we, we would see the reflection of it. We'd see the reflection of the whole thing. So for ray diagrams, we don't want to plot the whole thing. So what we tend to do is to plot the f top of something, and then we plot the bottom of something. So we arbitrarily set a dot to represent the bottom of our object. Now, there's nothing over there. It's an image but we perceive that image because our eye perceives light as though it travels in a straight line and we can set up the laser and we can do the same thing on the other side but it's possible you might not have a laser and for most ray diagrams you really don't use a laser what you're going to use is just simple geometry so you uh, to make it a little bit easier for you I'm gonna start over with another piece of paper now I can trace through so I can line things up the way we had them and the first thing of course you do is you trace your mirror and I'm going to mark the dots that I've already plotted and then I mark the other dot that represents the bottom of my car line it up and now what I'm going to do is uh, plot it using geometry there's my reflected image so now let's plot this image without a laser so I need uh, a straight edge pick some random ray of light that's going to strike the mirror and then I need a protractor and a protractor allows me to measure angles so I set it up I find the 90 degree point that's my normal and I count 10 20 30 40 50 about 52 degrees so I come the other side 10 20 30 40 about 52 degrees and so this is going to be my reflected ray I don't need the laser I know the rules of reflection the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection now the ray that's reflected, I perceive that it's going to be coming in a straight line from the other side of the mirror. Even though I didn't look from there, I know that if I set up a laser and turned everything around, that's where it would be coming from. Now I've got to pick a second ray. I'm going to pick a real convenient one. I'm going to hit the ray that hits the mirror perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. It hits it and bounces straight back. Geometry for that one is simple. It's coming off the mirror, but I perceive that it's coming from within the mirror it's from somewhere over here and where the two of them cross that's going to be the bottom of my image so I've plotted the top and the bottom of my image I put my object back in place line it up with the top of the bottom and I put a mirror in there's my image ha I put a red car in there in this case there really is one all right, this is Optics, and that was a ray diagram. Good luck. Enjoy it.